I'm not going to waste your time. Here's a no BS explanation of the bit. Bitcoin having with less than 90 days to go until the next Bitcoin having. It's time to discuss why this event is so incredibly important for the entire cryptocurrency space, not just for Bitcoin. So what's Bitcoin having? Well, put simply, every four years, the amount of Bitcoin that miners are rewarded for running the network is cut in half. So right now, every 10 minutes, approximately, there's a new block created that gets encoded into the network. From April, the block rewards that those guys get for doing that work gets cut in half. Now, this mechanism was established to ensure that early rewards for the network were there, while also slowly decreasing inflation over time to ensure longevity of the network. Now, this has been associated with broader market cycles in crypto. Essentially, Bitcoin halvings happen, and a bull run starts shortly after. The next halving, again, April this year. So get ready. But interestingly, one of the reasons why the Bitcoin having is such a mystery to many people is because no matter how many times you go and read over Satoshi's visionary Bitcoin white paper, you're not actually going to find any mention of a Bitcoin having in there. In fact, the only deflationary mechanism that you're going to find in Bitcoin's proof of work section is actually just adjusting the mining difficulty for Bitcoin as stated, increasing hardware speed and varying interest in running nodes, where if Bitcoin is mined too quickly, the difficulty of obtaining it will increase, okay? But it wasn't until a couple of months later after that that Satoshi Nakamoto turned the concept of Bitcoin into a reality using the cypherpunk mailing list to distribute Bitcoin's source code out to a bunch of well, you know, hardcore computer nerds, basically. Bitcoin's remaining deflation mechanisms were introduced thereafter. A hard cap of exactly 21 million Bitcoins exists, and having the amount distributed every four years is what the having does. Fun fact, the last Bitcoin having will be in 2140, approximately. It's a long time from now. Our grandchildren will see it. Now let's talk about the history of Bitcoin having, because this is very interesting. Since the introduction of Bitcoin, we've had three having events take place. The first occurred in 2012, cutting the reward of Bitcoin from 50 per block down to 25 per block. Shortly afterward, many miners who were over leveraged ended up throwing in the towel. The Bitcoin mining game is a pretty brutal business. This caused the difficulty of mining Bitcoin to adjust and become easier for miners that remained. It's a self-correcting mechanism. A year later, almost to the day, we saw our first Bitcoin bull run. Bitcoin saw its second halving event in 2016, dropping the reward again, because that's what the halvings do, per block from 25 Bitcoin down to 12.5 Bitcoin. Following in line with the previous halving, Bitcoin kicked off its second major bull run one year later. Then, like beautiful clockwork, 2020 rolls around and the Bitcoin reward gets cut in half again. But with Bitcoin's popularity greater than during any of the previous halvings, things are starting to change a little bit. This is the first time that the price of Bitcoin saw an immediate impact. Now, it was perhaps a bit slightly less exciting than it would have been because of the pandemic in 2020, but still Bitcoin kept Bitcoining. It's what it does, giving us our third major bull run the following year and pushing the price higher than we'd ever seen it before, up to about 70K, solidifying our current all-time high. Currently, about 900 Bitcoin a day are given to miners as the reward for running the network. That is going to drop to 450 in April when the Bitcoin halving happens. 225 in 2028 when the next Bitcoin halving happens. 112.5 in 2032 when miners will actually start receiving less than one BTC per block for the first time in history. At some point, the impact of Bitcoin halvings, I believe, will diminish. And the four-year cycle that has dominated crypto for so many years will probably go away. But until that happens... The four-year cycle around the Bitcoin having remains a proven theory. So how do you get ready for this Bitcoin having thing? Do you need to do anything? No, you don't need to do anything, okay? What you should do to prepare for the having, just sit back, relax, and enjoy. If you're listening, of course, to the naysayers and haters out there, they're going to tell you it's the end of Bitcoin. Completely not true. Bitcoin miners just everything will be fine. Maybe there will be a, a price correction afterwards. 
anticipation, reality, buy the rumor, sell the news, all that kind of stuff. But history tells us that something very different is taking place here. Placing each having event side by side paints a beautiful picture for investors, a beautifully bullish picture. Historically, there's no better time to invest in Bitcoin than before a Bitcoin halving occurs, although the six months after the Bitcoin halving, probably still a pretty good time to buy in most cases. Not because I or anyone else says so, by the way, but it's just the laws of supply and demand. They're what prove it. With every reduction of the Bitcoin block reward, the price of Bitcoin has jumped significantly by the following year because demand keeps going up, doesn't it? While not impacting the price immediately, the long-term effects of each Bitcoin halving should not be ignored. Of course, of course, of course, guys, this is Bitcoin, and we do love to speculate on what the price could be. No one really knows. We all like to have our guesses. But the halving, of course, being the only bullish event we've always been able to count on. Going back to the beginning of time, no, back to the previous halving, we can see that as evidence. In 2020, speculators believed that Bitcoin would peak somewhere between $350,000 and $450,000 by the following year. So this is a warning to remember price predictions are just that, okay? Everyone's got a price prediction like butts, you know, but some of them stink. We're tracing back to around $200,000 by 2024 around the halving, but that's not what happened, right? Nice wish. But of course, never happened. Bitcoin never does exactly what you think it's going to do price-wise. Although it just does go up long in the wrong run, right? Price action peaked around 70K November 2021, which is great. I thought it was going to 100K. Didn't happen. Sality. Falling short, of course, of reaching anything. What was being speculated, though? Again, wild speculations coming out back at the time. But by the time the 2021 Bitcoin having bull run finished, Bitcoin's price had already increased by over 530%. Not bad at all for Bitcoin, right? That's okay. As new factors like the Bitcoin ETF are now coming into play, Bitcoin become even more linked to the equity market movements going forward. And thus again, as mentioned, that long-term impact of Bitcoin halvings may start to diminish over time as a predictive tool for like, okay, this is when a new market cycle starts, go. But if the past rhymes, then the chance to buy reasonably priced Bitcoin and altcoins is running out. You maybe have nine more months from the time that you watch this video. So is the 2024 halving really going to be different? Well, with more interest in Bitcoin than any previous halving, of course, it's always different, but it's always kind of the same too. Experts like Kathy Woods believe that this time is indeed different, but not for the reasons that you might think, besides the obvious reasons of just less Bitcoin being released each year, each month, each week, each day by the miners, making the existing supply, of course, more valuable, all while demand continues to rise. So there's that to factor in. Also, Bitcoin is going to cross a pivotal moment when the block reward is actually reduced this year because for the first time in history, the amount of Bitcoin available to mine each year will be reduced to less than 1% of the total supply. Not only that, this year's halving event puts the supply growth rate of Bitcoin below that of gold for the first time ever making Bitcoin officially a better store value than gold. Also, thanks to the Bitcoin ETF, owning Bitcoin is now easier than any previous having, opening up a floodgate of potential capital to come into the market. And the development of Bitcoin Layer 2 technology, like ordinals, the Lightning Network, Rootstock, all this stuff, that's all helped to reduce the amount of Bitcoin in circulation because people are using Bitcoin on these different Layer 2 networks. Now, here's an interesting thing to consider. 2012's having 10.5 million Bitcoin supply. 2016's having, we had 15.7 million Bitcoin out there. 2020's having 18.375 million. And then in 2024's having, we're going to have around 19.7 million Bitcoin, which represents almost 97% of the entire supply. In 2028, we'll be at 20.3 million Bitcoin, which represent uh, around 98% of the total supply of Bitcoin that will ever exist. It's crazy. It's crazy. How the halving affects price can be illustrated also if you look at something like the stock to flow model, which has had its criticisms in the past, but still useful reference, showing us how the scarcity of Bitcoin directly affects the price over time. You can see at the dark purple areas have always indicated the best buying opportunities for investors looking to get reasonably priced, good value, Bitcoin. So why are the Bitcoin having so important? We know why it's important for us. It's the ka-ching, ka-ching, baby. 
The Bitcoin halvings are about more than just the price of Bitcoin. They're actually pretty good for the overall health of the Bitcoin network too. Keeping miners and basically every participant bound to this strict set of rules that can never be manipulated. Remember, Bitcoin's monetary supply, monetary policy is set. The halvings remind us all why Bitcoin is the best damn store value in town that we can own, helping reduce the supply of Bitcoin coming into markets, new emissions every four years. Seems like a pretty straightforward thing to do and a pretty cool idea. I mean, Satoshi, dude, this dude thought it out, didn't he? What a genius. But it affects more than the amount of Bitcoin just being produced. It also affects the amount of Bitcoin available for purchase because Bitcoin miners are some of the biggest sellers in the market. And they are about to have their ability to sell Bitcoin reduced by half. Now, the first two having events, the amount of Bitcoin available for purchase actually increased because miners are getting so much Bitcoin, it was outstripping demand. It's changed recently. Starting with the 2020 halving, the amount of Bitcoin available started getting smaller and smaller and smaller. That's the available purchase to purchase on exchanges. With more than 19 and a half million Bitcoin mined already, only less than 2 million are available for purchase on exchanges. Imagine that. That's crazy, man. With each halving, this amount decreases, by the way. Following the 2020 halving, we actually saw the amount of Bitcoin available for purchase drop by more than 20 freaking percent. And while this is happening, the amount of addresses holding one Bitcoin or more keeps rising. So if the halving was a selling event, wouldn't the amount of addresses holding one Bitcoin shrink? Food for thought. People are holding. 75% of Bitcoin has not moved on chain over a year. People are holding long term. This may be the last chance event here. Last chance to get Bitcoin at the lowest price, if not for the next year, possibly forever, grain of salt. It's also a chance for us all to stop and think about the all-time highs and start looking at the all-time lows and thinking about where is Bitcoin going? That's because within the first six months of every halving, Bitcoin posts its lowest price available post-halving forever. We're never seeing a $100 Bitcoin again, a $1,000 Bitcoin, or even a $10,000 Bitcoin again. Don't pay attention to the bears, okay? Each having is without a doubt the best time ever to buy Bitcoin, historically speaking anyway. Thanks for watching.